Let's work on the concept of Cobb Douglas function in this video. Now we have a utility that depends on two goods, x and y. And we can see that this utility has exponents in it. And our goal in, uh, in this series is to show that there is a relationship between these exponents and how much we invest in these specific goods. So let's prove that relationship by using the Lagrange. So we have the utility function and we also have this budget constraint. So the money that we spend on x and the money that we spend on y has to make up the total money available to us. So let's write this entire relationship in our Lagrange where we maximize this function. So x to alpha times y to beta minus lambda because this is the coefficient that takes into account the constraint that we have on our utility maximization and we write that constraint over here px times x plus py times y minus m now let's solve the Lagrange recall that we must take into account the first order conditions the derivative of the Lagrange with respect to x equals to 0 and the derivative of the Lagrange with respect to y must equal 0 as well so let's solve that what would be the derivative of our Lagrange with respect to x? x is the variable, everything else is a constant. So we would have x to power alpha derivative, that's alpha times x to the power alpha minus 1 times the constant times y to the power beta minus lambda multiplied with the derivative of px times x is just px because that's the constant. Everything else has nothing to do with x, so it's just 0, meaning that this derivative must equal to 0. Now let's do the same for the Lagrange derivative with respect to y, where y is the variable, everything else is the constant. So y to power beta derivative, that's beta times y to the power beta minus 1, multiplied with the constant of x to the power of alpha, minus lambda, which is the constant, multiplied with px times x, has nothing to do with y, so we can ignore it, but then py times y, derivative with respect to y, we just keep the constant, which is py, price of y. M also we can disregard because it has nothing to do with Y. This derivative must equal to zero. Okay, let's make some more space and continue. So what do we have now? We have lambda times PX, lambda times PY. So intuitively we can see that there's gonna be a relationship between the lambdas. So let's write that. Alpha times X to the power alpha minus one. What is X to the power alpha minus one? That's the same as X to the power alpha times x to the power of minus 1 times y to the power of beta equals to lambda times px. And now if we have a look at the second equation, we have beta times y to the power of beta minus 1. That's y to the power of beta multiplied with y to the power of minus 1 times x to the power of alpha equals to lambda times py. Okay, so we have lambdas on both equations. Let's leave the lambdas and let's take everything else on the other side. So that would be, let's go over here, alpha times x to the power of alpha times x to the power of minus 1 times y to the power of beta. And now we divide by p of x because we take it on the other side. So we divide this by p of x and that's going to equal to lambda. Let's do the same over here. Let's divide this side of the equation by p of y. So we would have beta times y to power beta times y to power minus 1 times x to power alpha divided by the price of y equals to lambda. Now we, had what, now we have what we wanted, lambda and lambda. Lambda and lambda are equal, so that means that these equations are going to be equal. So let's write them together. Alpha times x to power alpha times x to power minus 1 times y to power beta divided by the price of x equals to beta times y to the power of beta times y to the power of minus 1 <coughs> times x to the power of alpha divided by the price of y. Now let's do some math here because we can cancel out some terms. So we got x to the power of alpha, x to the power of alpha cancel out. And what else? y to the power of beta and y to the power of beta cancel out. And now we have all these things left. So let's write them together. We have alpha times x to the power of minus 1 divided by the price of x equals to beta times y to the power of minus 1 divided by the price of y. We have x to the power minus 1. We have y to the power minus 1. We can write them 
as a fraction we could write it as alpha divided by x times bx because x to the power minus 1 is 1 over x and the same logic goes here beta times y to the power minus 1 is 1 over y so if we write here 1 over y and we also have the price of y let's leave it like that for this video in the next video we'll continue and we will show this relationship that we mean